And people talk a lot about gain. So we want to know what, what is gain and where it comes from. Uh, I don't know what it is, uh, but uh, if it's good, then too much must be better. It, it, uh, and here's, here's, what it, here's what it comes from. It comes from concentrating the signal in some directions at the expense of others by field reinforcement and cancellation. And we're, we're always stuck with 100 watts. I always cringe when somebody says, well, you have uh, 6 dB gain, and therefore, if you have 100 watts in, you get 400 watts out. No, uh, you don't. Uh, if you had an amplifier that had 6 dB gain, uh, and you put uh, 100 watts into it, you would get 400 watts out. That's not the case with an antenna. What happens is that your field strength increases uh, by some factor because of the concentration of the field in some directions. Uh, a good analogy is a flashlight, where if you take the just the bulb out of the flashlight and hold it up, it's not going to make anything very bright. And then you put the reflector back on, and you notice that it gets an awful lot brighter, but over a very small angular uh, direction. So uh, the same thing, you're doing the same thing with the antenna. You're starting with the same amount of total light or RF and uh, you're concentrating in some directions and at the expense of others. Uh, a good example is a, a vertical, you gotta use a little imagination here. You're looking straight down at a vertical and it's radiating and these uh, little dotted lines represent the point where you freeze in time for a moment when the field is moving away from the antenna. And uh, uh, you, can, uh, you can use wave action in, a, in an ocean or a water tank to uh, uh, imagine what's happening here because it acts exactly the same. And here's a trough of a wave and here's the peak of the next wave and here's the next trough and here's the next peak and so forth. And uh, then if you take another uh, vertical and you put it uh, a half wavelength away and you uh, excite both of them in phase, you'll find that there are places where you have a trough and a peak, both at the same place, like right here, and you have another one there. And so what's happening here is they are canceling, and you end up with no, no signal, no wave in that direction. And in this direction, you end up with the uh, troughs adding together and the peaks adding together. So you have a, a wave that is twice the amplitude of, it, of the individual vertical and you have a concentration of energy in those directions. And that's how a phased array works. And in fact, any kind of directional antenna works the same way. By having multiple elements or places or pieces of wire that uh, have currents flowing in them and then the, uh, the fields that they produce reinforce and cancel in various directions. And uh, here's your uh, pattern of the antenna that I was just showing the two verticals. Uh, you can see that we've got about 3 dB gain. Let's say actually got one, two, three, four, about four. And the reason we have a little more is because mutual coupling increases the currents in the, in the wires. And uh, uh, we're not getting something for nothing though. It's, uh, you'll find that the volume of this uh, little ring and that little ring, if you were to plot everything in a linear scale, is a little uh, less than half of the volume of the single uh, vertical, which is this blue ring right here. So it all works out. You get your same amount of power out. You've just concentrated it in some directions at the expense of others. Now, I've been talking a lot about gain without really explaining too much exactly what it is. And uh, when you say an antenna has got the gain of so many dB, it's like saying I have twice as much money or I make twice as much money. And the question is, uh, what does that mean? Does it mean I made as much, twice as much as I did last year, or as you do, or Bill Gates, or the average panhandler? Just saying that I make twice as much money is meaningless. And similarly, saying that an antenna has a gain of 6 dB is also meaningless. Because gain is a relative number. And we need to know relative to what in order for it to have any meaning. And it turns out that there are several different standards that are used. And if somebody doesn't tell you what the standard is, you don't know what the, uh, what the actual gain is relative to anything you know. It's the measure of the relative field strength of two antennas. 
and it's generally different in each direction, hence the pattern. And a couple of popular references are an isotropic source and a dipole. And when it's referenced to an isotropic source, the gain is said to be in dBi, or dB relative to isotropic. Or if it's relative to a dipole in free space, it's dVd. Now, both of these have use. Uh, you'll find EasyNEC, uh, my, my antenna software, always gives you gain in dBi, and I will show you why. An isotropic radiator is an imaginary antenna. It radiates equally in all directions. In free space, the radiation pattern is a sphere. You can't buy one, they don't exist, but they're very useful. I will tell you, I'm sorry, I got this out of order, but gain is uh, gain relative to a single element. You can usually estimate it as being between three and six dB each time you double the number of elements. That's a good rule of thumb to estimate the gain of, uh, of an antenna. For example, a three element beam should have 10 and 20, between 10 and 20 times log three or 4.8 to 9.5 dB relative to a dipole. That is to relative to a single element. So we know that uh, a dipole in free space has a gain of about 2.15 dBi. Here is a W7EL 4.47 DVD gain dipole. So how did we do that? This is a, a model of it. Of, of course, models are never wrong, right? Yes, they are, but it isn't here. This is, this is uh, actually accurate. Uh, we've got a gain here shown at an uh, elevation angle of 32 degrees. We have a gain of 6.62 dBi. You subtract off the 2.15 and you've got a gain of 4.47 dBd. Now, how did I do that? I found antenna manufacturers advertising their antenna gains in this manner. And so they come up with some really attractive, exciting gains for their antennas. And the way you do that, well, that was my, uh, the, way, the way that's done is that my antenna, my magic dipole here, has that kind of gain because it is done over ground. Now, what happens to DBI over ground? If you take, uh, an isotropic, imaginary isotropic antenna, and you take all of the energy from the antenna and you all the power, and you put it in a hemisphere instead of radiating it in a sphere, that is in, over ground instead of in free space, you automatically increase the field strength by three dB because you've got the same amount of power in half the volume. And therefore, antennas over ground will show an automatic three dB or so gain over an antenna in free space. The DVD, the 2.15 dB used for DVD, is really the gain of a dipole in free space. Over ground, the dipole has got at least 3 dB, or approximately 3 dB more gain. It can have a little more or less depending on how close it is to the ground. Mutual coupling will, uh, change the current in the antenna some and therefore increase it or decrease it. In this case, we've increased it an extra, um, extra dB, 1.47 dB. So that's how we got the extra gain was by simply putting it over ground. And uh, so that's the first thing that I claimed I would do is make a dipole with 4.47 dBD gain. This is why dBD is a kind of a, uh, a tricky measure, a tricky, reference to use. You should be very careful using it or when somebody else uses it. It's appropriate, for example, for a, um, uh, for a Yagi, so long as you are uh, referencing not a dipole in free space, but a dipole in the same environment as the Yagi. If you want to know the gain of a Yagi relative to a dipole, what you should do is model the dipole at the same height over the same ground. And then you put up, put in your Yagi and you measure its gain and the difference is the gain relative to a dipole. 
you don't just subtract off to a 0.15 dBd uh, or add on 2.15 dB, I'm sorry, uh, add on 2.15 to get your number. You'll get uh, results that are meaningless. Okay, there's the wizard pulled out the first uh, magic out of his hat. And at this point, I ask generally, how many people think I can pull off the rest of them? And uh, not as many hands usually go up as at first. Okay, I'm going to talk here just a little bit about uh, uh, the fact that uh, I'm going to emphasize a little bit the fact that uh, antennas have um, different gain in different directions, and that's very important. Uh, again, if you have a Yagi, for example, it's really useful and appropriate to talk about a single value for gain. Because, first of all, unless the Yagi is extremely long, the gain in a vertical pattern is going to be pretty much the same as a dipole. So you know that the gain of the, of the Yagi over the dipole is not going to be different uh, at different elevation angles, not very, uh, very much different anyway. And horizontally, you, when you talk about the gain of the Yagi, you're talking about the gain in its maximum direction, and you can generally turn the Yagi so that it points in the direction you want, and therefore you get to use uh, the maximum gain that it's capable of. That, however, is not appropriate for a lot of other kinds of antennas, the ones that you can't rotate. For example, here is a, a nice uh, double extended ZEP. Uh, two it's uh, two five wavelengths antennas um, fed in the center. And uh, it, it's got a gain of 5.11 dBi in free space. This is a free space. So you subtract off 2.15 dB, which is appropriate for free space. You find it's got about 2.5 dB, 2.6 dB or so gain over a dipole in free space. And, but even in, in free space, where you don't have ground to, to mess things up, there's your, there's your standard dipole. And what you find, though, is let's suppose that we want to talk to somebody who's in the direction of the little green cursor up here, which is uh, 36 degrees. And we find that in that direction, it is uh, 15 dB less than the dipole. Here's the extended double zep, and here's the dipole. So if you had this antenna, uh, and it was up between two trees, which typically an extended double zep will be, and you want to talk to somebody in uh, that direction, you will be 15 dB below a dipole. Only over this little narrow range of angles right here, from here to there, will you be any better than the dipole. And in many directions, in most directions, you'll be worse. And in some, you'll be a lot worse. Like through here, for example, you'll be very much worse. So saying that this antenna has so much gain uh, is really meaningless unless it is, you're talking about one fixed direction. It's sort of like having a flashlight and say, how bright's the flashlight? And uh, you have a flashlight that you can't uh, turn, and you're interested in what, how bright's the flashlight uh, 30 degrees off to the side. Yeah, you got more than 15 dB there.